Okay, well, let's get started this morning. Welcome, good to see y'all. And uh, nice warm morning out there, above freezing all night, so it's uh, great. Uh, anyway, it is winter coming on, and we're in the middle of fall, and so we can expect these things. We've had a great summer and fall. We had an eight, this is a kind of off the subject of our what we're going to be preaching on, but <laughs> we had uh, 18 degrees the other morning, and that's the coldest we've had since the beginning of March here in East Wooster. So uh, it's been quite a long stretch of decent weather, uh, at least warmth. Number six, number six, come thou almighty king, help us thy name to sing. Number six. mention a few things here before we continue on. Uh, let me mention first of all our piano player who's uh, uh, <laughs> getting up. She's getting, getting much better rapidly and we thank the Lord for that. Uh, we had such a blessing on Friday as she went into uh, her new doctor that they assigned and we went in, I don't know if she's told any of you about it, but uh, <clears throat> This doctor comes in all bubbly, and, and she was just so wonderful, and, uh, and we started talking about the Lord and where, what her background was. She's a graduate of Liberty Baptist College, or Liberty, and uh, that's where she got her med beginning medical, and then she went on through her MD and into a DO. And, uh, but she just loves to talk about the Lord and her salvation, and she's uh, so wonderful. I mean, to think of what, she's come through in the last couple doctors that she's had and now to have an assigned doctor uh, the hospital assigned that her to us uh, the lord assigned her to us okay uh, obviously the the direction and all this so we had a great time she had a wonderful checkup uh, everything is is looking great moving right right along uh, a lot like we said after this major surgery the last time we thought she would see some improvements and so she has now she's still recovering from the surgery and from the 
all the things that have been done. So uh, uh, that will continue. But um, she's got some color back. She's eaten full food now. She went off of her liquid diet, and so she's eating a normal food diet and handling it fairly well. So that's good to know. But we're, we're pleased and thank God for that. Well, then to top off the visit, we go in to the, uh, to, when we've got to leave, we go to the receptionist there, and uh, it was Nancy Decker. She's been working there in that depart surgical department for nine years now. And she's been through the same thing that, uh, and worse, she, hers went into septus before they were able to get it. Uh, and so she was, and I remember praying for her. I don't even know who told us about it, uh, but I remember that we were praying as a church for her. Uh, but as we were in there and, and we started talking, then the doctor came by quick and said, oh, and by the way, she's a, she knows the Lord too. <laughs> Uh, quite a hospital, I'll tell you. <laughs> but um, how wonderful it is to uh, have godly people and doctors that know the Lord, as well as many nurses there. So it's, it's been really an awesome time in that respect after what she's been through for so many months. And so we praise the Lord. It, uh, <clears throat> uh, next hour we might get into it more, but you know, we do things and, and people do things, Christians do things to give God the glory. And so these things give us reason to thank God for them, okay? Um, we don't need to have gratitude uh, given all the time one to another, but when it causes you to give thanks to God, then, then, then it's getting in the right place, see? And so we have to realize that. This is Thanksgiving time. This week, can you believe it already? It's Thanksgiving Day this week. Oh. But anyway, praise God that we have a day set aside for that. And uh, we're thankful for that. Also, uh, a new church list now that has the Wilsons on there with their address and phone number. Now, that's probably temporary address because they'll be there until the, they want to build a house up in Summit. So that's what they're working on. But um, now they're out of town this weekend in Wisconsin and also with family and also uh, the Cunes are traveling for a couple weeks. So they're not, they're not around. But um, wonderful to, to know that we have uh, people that are loving the Lord and, and, and doing these things. Uh, again, the, ho the holiday dinner that we have, December 5th, that's coming up <laughs> real soon. And that'll be our, our next service, uh, a meal, after this Sunday, after today. And so there will only be a 10.30 service that morning. Okay, we'll have a 10.30 service and then right into the dinner. And then we'll have another time after the meal where we can share poems or songs or uh, whatever's on your heart, okay? Uh, so if we can do that, that's always a good time. Let me give a quick update on Linda and Rob Fisher. Linda, they both had their third jab, their third shots, and now Linda is down with COVID-19. Uh, so whatever, I don't know what their treatment is or anything about it, just that, that we're, he was wondering why he wasn't able to be with her. See, they're on a lockdown down there, so they can't go anywhere again. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, Rob called a number of times. We've been talking this week, and, and finally he got to talk to the head nurse about Linda, and they told her she's got COVID-19. So uh, she's not going to the hospital. They're treating her there. Now, I don't know what type of treatment they're using, uh, but that's a, a whole other thing. But anyway, that's the update on her. And Rob says, well, maybe it's good that I haven't been able to contact her because she would really get bummed out because he's moving along toward going back to the apartment. And so in the next uh, 10 days, he may be going to the apartment. They're um, looking at possibly having him out of there by the end of the month. So whether that's good or bad, that's the way it is. And the state has, he's gone through all sorts of stuff there to, I mean, the state has been working with them and the 
the, you know, the, the uh, local agency, and they've had doctors have had to evaluate him on his taking pills, put pills in his things and using them and all this, so, uh, as well as cooking utensils and all these kind of things. So they are doing a pretty thorough job, it seems like, uh, but he is still, he's on a walker now primarily because he's taken a couple of trips in his room there when he turns around or something gets his feet tangled up with something like, uh, so pray for, pray for the situation there, whatever happens. And uh, we thank the Lord that he's been taking care of this, this well this long and, and uh, whatever's to come, that's up to the Lord. Okay, anything else that anyone wants to share? Something that, about, what? Oh, no, okay. Okay. Uh, Amen. Yeah, those things are, are pretty neat when they happen. You have that great fellowship that you just can't have with the world. And so it's always nice to... Uh, <clears throat> let me share one more here. This is a thank you card. Very nice. It says, uh, Dear Pastor Timmerman and Congregation, we appreciate the kind note of thanks and gift certificates. We are happy to mow the property for you. It takes us much less time and effort than you having to use a push mower. Thank you very much, Bill and Joanne. Uh, across the judge over here, Bill and Joanne. And uh, that's nice to know that uh, they appreciate it. We appreciate them and what they've done. And it's. Uh, been working out well. Thank the Lord for that. That's another thank you for the Lord. He causes us to give thanks. Amen. Okay, we have another letter here, but let's go on with number 11 in the songbook. <clears throat> when all thy mercies, O my God, my rising soul surveys, transported with the view, I'm lost in wonder, love, and praise. You see the mercy of God? Wow, that should cause you to get lost in the wonder, love, and praise for our wonderful God. How great it is. Number 11. <laughs>
every morning, always plenty there. Uh, talking about uh, some of the things I've been studying and, and seeing how God, God cares. He sends the rain on the just and the unjust. He cares for the lost, for the wicked people of the world. He wants them to see him as a caring God. Can you believe that? That's why he's long suffering, not willing that they should perish. He, he's still waiting for people to come. He's still begging them. He's still showing them uh, what a God we have. I mean, to, to have the, the patience and the kindness and the love that he has for man, for people that are lost and are fighting against him. And yet he just doesn't want to give up. Uh, what a God, what a God. <clears throat> Number 18. Thanksgiving time. Thank our God with hearts and hands and voices. You know, that's the problem with, the, like you were mentioning, the Jews, and uh, they don't have their heart in it. They do the sacrifices and the lip service and the things that God despises because their heart's not with it. And they don't love him with all their heart, soul, strength, and mind. <clears throat> now, we're not talking about Messianic Jews. We're talking about the general... Uh, run of the Israelites of Israel okay, the, as a nation. Okay, number 18. I just was reminded of this week or actually yesterday we there is a service I believe Tuesday a Thanksgiving service at the Presbyterian First Presbyterian Church in Worcester uh, it's a, it's significant and they wanted to invite us and anyone that wanted to go there they also have a meal involved uh, but the this is their last service they are closing the church, and uh, it's the oldest established church in Worcester. It was established in uh, 1792. And so, I don't know if we're next with 1799, but uh, uh, whatever, they, uh, you know, just no people, nobody to keep it running. And so the food pantry and everything is going. And so they, uh, but we were invited to that. If you want more information, I can give that to you. I don't think we're going to make it probably. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, that's uh, interesting to know. 
Okay, one more thing here. The a letter from the Smiths just came. Charlie and Joanne. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, just as a quick note to say thank you to all who have been praying for my return to Buenos Aires. Last Sunday, November 14th, I had the great blessing of preaching the first message in two years in person here in Iglesia Batista Libertad. It was a great blessing to see how the church has grown in my absence. Over half the congregation I have never met, and the love between one another is still very strong. I'm living in an apartment hotel that my pastor and his associates stayed in when they gave the church a blessing of visiting a few years back. It is only four blocks away from the church, and this week, and I will, uh, the following, I shall be occupied visiting many of the church members. Some new ones, but especially those who have not been to church for a few weeks, but came because I was to be there. <laughs> it was nice to see them, but sad to find out that their habit of attendance is the same as in the past. They attend faithfully, then miss a service, then a few services, then God ch chastens them and they return. Hopefully they will finally give up their old habits and be faithful to God and his command. It is sad to see some of the stores closed permanently because the COVID and the restrictions here are tighter than those in Texas, which I do not mind as I had COVID once and do not wish to have a repeat of it again. Joanne is still alongside her father, taking care of him while I'm in Argentina. She makes me proud how she honors her father when at times he makes it so hard to do. Other times he seems to be doing okay. His knees are getting weaker. Joanne needs to support him by pulling up on his belt while he uses walker, the short distance to his destination, usually his recliner. Please keep Joanne in your prayers and ask God to make it clear to her when she can share Christ, as most of the time it is an irritation to her father for her to do so. Thank you again for all your prayers and other sacrifices so that we can serve here in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Charlie and Joanne. So another uh, thing there, and, and there, of course, her dad has always been on their hearts because he's always rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Take your Bible and turn with me to to Psalm 100. Psalm 100, the old 100, they call it. <laughs> Always reminds me of Lester Roloff. I've heard him recite Psalm 100 so many times in his messages or uh, <clears throat> as his preaching service went on. Let's take Psalm number 100 and let's read that together, okay? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Oh my, the Psalms are so wonderful, and so much in the Psalms. There's, a, there's comfort, there's a direction. There's prayers, there's uh, just oh, so many things. There's rejoicing, there's singing. Uh, rejoice with the Psalms. Uh, Psalm 98.1 says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Uh, you just look through here, you know, Psalm 97.1, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of islands be glad thereof. Uh, just you go through the Psalms, you get back into the last ones, one, Psalm 145 uh, through 150, and you just see the praise and praise and praise. Uh, 
Psalm 96, O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. I thought about that as we sang the, the one song there, in whom this world rejoices, it said, in the one stanza. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, in my book, I always have changed that. I said, in whom this church rejoices. Uh, well, the world ought to be rejoicing, uh, but the world has rejected its maker and its God uh, for idolatry and all the wickedness of the world. Uh, so in a general sense, that's true. Uh, <clears throat> the world, as his creation rejoices, even under the curse. And so uh, the, the trees and the animals and everything else rejoice at their maker. And that's the way it is. Psalm 95 is one that I learned way back when I was a little child. I used to love this psalm. I learned it not from the Bible. I learned it from singing it in our church. And uh, we, we didn't sing it a lot, but occasionally uh, we would sing that, especially at a midweek service or something special, uh, whatever. And it was... Uh, um, a canticle, a song, a hymn. Uh, many would call it probably a chant that they used, but it was a song set to music. Uh, the first seven verses, uh, up until today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, uh, because that's the change in the in the uh, psalm that the, is written here. But this one comes, and I'm not going to sing it, although I probably could, because that's what immediately comes to mind, and that's how I remember it. I, I didn't remember it from memorizing it. But, uh, O oh come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. And right now, it's hard to say it, read it, and not sing it. She knows it, too. Uh, <clears throat> let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Um, what a psalm. And it's, uh, to, these, these psalms about our great God, we need to memorize them. We need to learn them. And I'm thankful that as a little child, before I could read, why I was learning songs like this, uh, believe it or not, the King James Bible in the Lutheran hymn book. <laughs> uh, but that's, uh, that's the way it was back then. Uh, my dad was an old Bible believer until he passed away at 95. And uh, that's just the way it is. Stand on the word. We have the word of God. And we have some wonderful psalms. <clears throat> Look at Psalm 103. Psalm 103, I want to read through this psalm, and I'd like to read it, uh, I'm going to read verses 1 to 7, and then we will read in unison verses 8 to 14, and then I'll read 15 to 18, and we'll again finish it all together with 19 to 22. So I'll see if we can put this together. So I'm going to read uh, through verse 7 here. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. 
The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Now through verse 14, all together. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Aren't you glad that he's so gentle with us and that he woos us along? And now uh, 15 through 18 I'll read. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. Hey, that's a long time, isn't it? Everlasting to everlasting. Ooh, glory to God, amen. Uh, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Okay, all together. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Ooh, glory to God. Bless the Lord. Uh, can we bless God? Oh, my. We talk about his blessings to us, and he wants us to bless him. And you worship and adore him, and you'll bless him, too. Give him the glory that's due unto him. <clears throat> Psalm uh, 146. Let's go to Psalm 146. Psalm 136 is the one that uh, has the refrain at after each verse. <clears throat> well, I can't. And we're, we're not going to read that one this morning. It's the one, oh, give thanks in the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So everything that Israel, uh, and when it accounts what they went through in the Red Sea, it's his mercy endureth forever. Uh, now in Psalm 146. Let's read this, every other verse. Uh, I'll read the first, and then you guys on the second, and so forth. Okay, Psalm 146. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever. Which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. 
the Lord shall reign forever. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for these psalms, Lord. Thank you that we can worship and adore you. Father, you are the worthy to receive uh, praise and thanksgiving. And uh, Lord, all the things of our life we give to you. And Father, we thank you for this time that we can look at the psalms. And Lord, I'd ask now that you'd uh, help us to uh, spend some time, Lord, just thinking about you and praying for the needs that you've made known to us, Lord. Thank you for the hits as being here last Sunday and the blessing that they were. And Father, we just ask that you continue blessing this work as you have, bringing folks in, Lord, and loving you with all their heart, soul, strength, and mind. Help us to continue on for your glory, we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop there. We have a little bit of time, uh, so back and pray. Others may be coming in and, and then uh, we'll spend some time in prayer. Ladies, you can do how you like to get together here. Okay. God bless you. Hello, this is Pastor Paul. Thanks for watching. Now subscribe if you'd like to see more messages like this. Share with your friends. And, uh, hit the like button. Post any comments that you might have or questions below and we'll get to you. Come out and visit us. Church times, 9.30 and 10.30 Sunday mornings. East Wooster, New York. Look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Amen.